please remember to leave a like, a comment, share the video about, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome back to a Megon 2 Electric Boogaloo. Today we're going to be responding to a video talking about fat phobia and all the total reasons, yes, that explain, adequately explain, convey a beautiful message of peace and tolerance as to why someone is fat. Yes, that, that that's pretty much it. It's a lengthy one, so brace yourselves. It might take a while to get through. You are fat phobic, you are also being classist. Let me explain. Now that's how you start a video. You hook them, you reel them in with some buzzy buzzness, you make sure they're paying full attention, and then you unload your mad facts on the enemy. That's how you win the wars these days. You don't need to sign up for the draft. You hurt their feelings instead. Now I would love to know, as someone that is lower income, and I've been very open about that for a long time, how it is fat phobic or classist to look down on someone who chooses to be fat. I will say for the sake of it, humans are very judgy. So to choose to be something is going to have others judge you for it. It's like when somebody has a particular style and after a number of years they change it. It happens. Humans get older. It's when you start to push what you are, fat in this context, as if it is good, healthy and okay when it is not, that's where the problem usually arises. If that is a form of classism, then you've got my attention. Someone who has lesser money doesn't have the luxury of spending more money on healthier foods. That is correct. As someone that grew up hand to mouth, bread line, the usual of not having the money to buy better food, we had to use alternative methods to be able to make it easier for ourselves. For example, we grew our own vegetables and fruits. We had an apple tree, a plum tree, we had some chickens. We had to find alternative ways to make it work. This is something we still do. In fact, next year I'm planning my next harvests, my next crops, because I want to grow particular plants I believe I can get the most out of and also feed the tortoise. It saves money. Why do you think at the dollar store you see quick made meals or some junk food? You don't see healthier foods like vegetables, fruits. To buy a whole meal at a grocery store is so expensive depending on the size of your family. Again, you're quite right. However, I would point out, the reason those ready-made meals don't have as many vegetables is because they don't sell as well. Simple as that. They will go with the ones that sell easier because quantity over quality. It's a very American mantra. You guys produce the most, but it is the lowest common denominator. A phase we, the United Kingdom, got out of quite a number of years ago when we started to properly introduce food standards, something which you've yet to catch up on. Additionally, if you want to make an excuse why you can't eat healthier, for example, I've got to make this feed a family, you need a different job that pays better, so make better choices on that part. Live in an area where the cost of living is a bit more manageable, as opposed to living somewhere for the sake of saying I live there, or because my political values, which by the way if you have a family, your political values mean jack shit, your family comes first. The list does in fact go on, but your wider message is still quite right. But if this is why you're fat, um, it's an excuse. Even if it's just for yourself anyway. That's why it's so much easier for people to go to fast food places because most fast food joints nowadays have dollar menus. If you're buying food just for yourself and you have the disposable income to be a bit, you know, better quality with it, you'll do it. If you don't, understandably, you'll look for the easier option. If you've settled into your life and accepted that that is the only option available to you, then chances are you are not the type, you're a settler basically, you're a settler. You should instead seek to be a reacher, someone trying to be more, achieving more to make your life better. Now I understand the cost of living has driven things up, inflation has not helped. You'll find little to no help from governments, but by all means use them as also someone you can blame for your inadequacies and for why you are obese. And you can feed your entire family for about $10. If that's for one meal, you do realize if you buy certain things in bulk, you can actually do it for cheaper. You just need to know where to look. Sometimes finding things that are reduced, especially things that can be frozen as it buys you time. In fact, if one learns to be frugal because they refuse to do better or be more, you can often find you can acquire better quality foods or make better quality foods with lower quality foods. 
Something as simple as buying a bland chicken breast and then growing your own in a windowsill hurts. You can make something better from that. A little green finger here and there will go and reach far places. I wonder if I can take this patronizing sort of delivery any further. Hmm. Versus when you're going to go to a grocery store and depending on the size of your family, you're going to be spending average just for yourself and maybe another person, 30 to $40 for just one meal. As I'm English, I don't have this cost of living issue you have. It's a very different scale over here because we use real money as opposed to your cute little dollar that I would associate with Monopoly. Also, as I'd earlier mentioned, cost of living in individual states varies massively. If you're in a more metropolitan region, the cost of living goes up significantly. So I don't know if $30 is considered good or bad. Over here, if it was 30 pounds for one meal, holy balls, you are being ripped off. For a tenth of that, I can get a meal deal that will do me handily. Then again, I could, for the exact same amount of money, buy a number of ingredients to make a meal that would be better and leave me excess so I could make more. A weekly food shop here is a lot less. I would advise, so you don't have any excuses, you live somewhere that is cheaper. And some people will argue this and say, well, people can go work out. Like, yeah, you can eat crappy foods, but you can go work out. This is true. I have found, though, that people who are naturally larger or are larger or have been for a longer period of time, when they eat crappier food, it is harder for them to burn it off. This is why you make more of a concerted effort. Go for a walk every couple hours. Go for a jog. Actually, you can do a number of very simple workouts that don't require a gym membership. You can do better for yourself. I come from a family that is quite large, so I find it a lot harder to burn off what my friend David can burn off in seconds because his metabolism is insane, whereas I just don't have one. So I'm more thoughtful with what I take in. I still eat more than him though, and a lot of the time I do in fact eat junk food because I'm not trying to lose weight. Again, I weigh like 195 and I'm insanely tall, so it means nothing to me really. But also I'm getting older, I don't care. I still go to the gym every single day though, because it is a commitment from me to my body to preserve it for as long as possible. What's your excuse? Gyms cost money. Ding, 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 ding. I fucking knew you were gonna say that, you son of a bitch. That's extra income that's coming out of that person's pocket. And some people do not have that money to spend. So what you do, you look up some simple YouTube videos because they are available. You do the workout in your living room. Hell, you could actually acquire simple items from your food shop and use those as weights if you want to build up the self-esteem and the confidence to start doing things more publicly. I mentioned going for a walk. You'll insert the excuse of, but when do I have the time? I mean, you made this video, there was your time. You could even make it a family event and take the kids out for a walk. Hiking is remarkably good for the lungs and good cardio. If you walk uphill a lot, great for the core as well, which for people who have a gunt or a fupa would actually help you strengthen those core muscles that allowed Nurgle to manifest. And some other people will say, well, they can go walking around their block or go running. Not everyone lives in the same area that you do, not in the same neighborhood. Are you about to say yours is perhaps too dangerous? There's too many OG bloods and crips? Is that it? Did you try to gentrify and fail? Is this another excuse to say, but my area is more this and negative and I can't go outside because of crime and Trump? Mostly Trump because, and that's literally the excuse given. Any excuse to not do something and not one reason for why you can. The person who would have suggested that suggested it because it is an easy and readily available option. Stick some earphones in, go for a walk, put Spotify on and bosh. I go for a walk at least two to three times a day. During those walks, I average about six to 8,000 steps. I do it because I like it. I do it also because I'm at the computer. I work for two to two and a half hours on a video and then I go for a walk. That is a smart move on my part because my brain needs that distraction. Even when it's raining, hell it's raining when I'm recording this. But during the recording of this, I started off to go for a walk because that's what Meg does. I found the time and I did it. Some people, it's too dangerous to go outside and go running around your block when, they're, when they know that their area isn't great. Then move. I know the moving process is not the easiest, but when one explores their options, they either make the best of the situation or they find a way out of it. If you commit yourself to improving your situation, you will succeed. I've always believed in hard work paying off, and yes, there are setbacks, but those setbacks, if you let them control you, are where you stop. Stop being the person that stops. 
I could have done that eight and a half years ago on YouTube when I couldn't grow my main channel. And look at me now. We're on a second channel and we're trying to get to 10,000 subs. That's my goal, to be better, to strive to be more, improve if I can. That's the goal and one must seek to do that. If all you ever do is settle, you will never amount to anything and just be more like what you are right now. An arbiter of excuses. Some people say, well, I work a, a 12 hour shift or I work a nine to five and I can figure out how to make time to cook good meals and go work out. There are many different types of people on this planet. Some have the ability to always be active and busy or find a way to be active and busy either because they're easy to be distracted and they need to focus their mind on different tasks because they like to maintain a level of busyness because they get bored if they do nothing. They find that there are a number of entertainment sources out there that are quite mundane. And then there are others who prefer the mundane and there's nothing wrong with that. But if it makes your situation so bad that you become morbidly obese and then you end up hurting yourself and others around you, or you make excuses for why you're getting bigger and bigger and doing nothing in the process to make your life better or easier, then you just become someone, if you start to blame online especially, that deserves the ire of the court of public opinion. Over the years of my main channel, I've followed a number of creators who are quite large. Dainty, they call themselves. But one I never covered was called Hungry Fat Chick. At the moment, she's on a genuine weight loss journey and she's succeeding. The Slatten sisters have done amazing with their weight loss journeys. It can be done even if you don't earn as much. People who have lower income are just trying to survive. Their main focus is paying their bills and keeping food on the table and a roof over their head. You are of course quite right, but if you are overweight, that would indicate you have access either to more food than you should have, or you are a remarkably sedentary person, not just in life away from work, but at work as well. To live the longest and best version of a life, you need to be active anyway. A minimum of 10k steps a day walked. You can make the excuses of just trying to survive, but if you want to lead by example so your children are better than you, you have to lead by example. If your children only see that life is a struggle, they'll never try and be more because they won't want to be more knowing that that is what adulthood is. You show them a better path, so they then show their children a better path, and so on and so on, and lead that, well, positivity, I guess? Yeah, that. Forward. There, if they have to decide between a quick meal at McDonald's or Burger King or wherever, or a pie, a pizza pie, versus spending, if you have a family of three, you're 100 $200 on meals for, on groceries for a week, and people don't have the extra dollars, most of the time, they're gonna go for the cheaper option that's gonna keep their family filled. So I asked my Discord server for a bit of help here, and they very kindly pointed out this does vary from state to state. In some states, it could be, depending on the size of your family, up to 3,500 a month. Pre-COVID, it was actually a lot lower, and some states have much cheaper regions depending on what the state cost of living is. I had mentioned, if you have the chance, you should move there, because it would be beneficial to you as a family. Now, yes, if you're stuck, you can barely afford to get by and insert all the other reasons here why you can't do something. I understand, I really do. But I've always believed you can accomplish anything when you actually try to do that thing. And if your cost of living is so high that you're spending as much as you've mentioned per meal, you need to look at alternative options rather than shoot them down cause fat phobia and classist. People forget that it is a luxury to be able to buy healthier foods. No, that's your interpretation of what it is to buy healthier foods. To buy healthier foods should be just to buy food. You've interpreted it as a luxury, not realizing actually options are available for you to not even have to buy it in the first place. You've just got to be willing to put the effort in to do it. Something as simple as growing your own in the windowsill. I mentioned that earlier with herbs. You can do it with vegetables as well. You buy a simple UV lamp that plugs in, Set it to a timer. It costs very little on Amazon. Oh, but no disposable income. Save up for one. Do a GoFundMe. You'd be surprised how generous people can be when you make a concerted effort to improve your life. It is a luxury to be able to go outside and take a nice walk in your neighborhood without getting catcalled or getting harassed or whatever's going on in that neighborhood. Hang on. I, 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 I had assumed it was because perhaps of some tensions in the more gang-related department. But no, you're blaming it on patriarchy and toxic masculinity. Would you feel better if I sat here now and said, I can promise you no one is catcalling you? I can promise you, if you are focusing on your health, some will point and laugh, but once they see you actually do shit, they'll ignore you for as long as you ignore them. Because if you want to be more, you need to be above them. 
not locked inside like a prisoner, making excuses for why they're getting bigger and their home is getting smaller. Don't let others drag you down, okay? You'll only go as far as you want to, but if someone seeks to tear you down and you let them, congratulations, you failed at life. It is a luxury to be able to spend an extra 10, $20 on a membership at a gym. It's a luxury. I'll disagree with you again on this one, but more semantics. I'll go instead and say, it is a luxury, you're right, to an extent. I consider it less that, though, and more a commitment to you. But I can understand not being able to, along with not being able to go outside in case someone wolf whistles in my direction or says, I'm a feeder, let me feed you. People who tend to be fat phobic and tend to say, well, what's the excuse? What's the excuse? You don't know what goes on in a person's life. You don't know what's their family situation. You don't know what their financial situation is. You don't know what their health situation is. Is this the part where I do the nasally, oh, you don't know me, you don't know me thing? Trying to be sassy about this shit? If you share your life online, chances are we know everything we need to know about you. If it's offline, of course, it means nothing. In the grand scheme, it doesn't mean anything to us. But if you do share your excuses with other people, and they provide solutions and you shoot it down the way you have in this video, you're going to get flack, online or offline, in fact. It's quite common. So for you to sit there and judge someone because they don't go to the gym or they don't eat healthier foods, you don't know what's going on in their life. So who are you to judge? According to what humanity is, humanity judges each other all the time. Who are you to judge? In the context of what humans do, the response is human, like you. Not me, of course. Cthulhu kin. I'm nothing like you. I'm better than you. The original point though stands. And it's quite important to acknowledge the fact that you can make every excuse and then you can go, oh, but who are you? It doesn't matter. If you're looking to talk about your problems and then simultaneously shut down any possible feedback that could help you, you are the type to simply want to speak your problem and drop the mic and walk away. You're not the type of person anyone else would want in your life. So the actual other answer that can be given is better than you. Because for as long as you are willing to drag yourself down and keep yourself there, while others seek to improve their situations, they are better than you. Simple as that. Life, like anything else, is competitive. It will always be that way, regardless of if anyone gets their socialist utopia, which, by the way, never existed, and nor does any utopia, really. I think I'm done rambling. Ta-ta, everyone. And smash the like.